something different. Okay, see how that goes. All right. <laughs> All right, so we are here today to talk about our arts relief funding that is available specifically to creativity grant recipients who are uh, funded for general operating support. And we'll go into details about that uh, as we as we dive in. But I'm going to start with a couple of our grounding slides. Um, this is just a reference shot of Zoom. You are probably quite familiar with this, um, but just to situate yourself with where the controls are, uh, the microphone and the, uh, the camera functions are to your left. Please make sure that you're muted throughout the session. You can feel free to be on or off camera, however you are comfortable. There is a chat function kind of towards the middle of your screen. You can feel free to put questions, comments in there throughout. Um, we're going to go through the entire presentation um, before we address questions, but we will make sure that we take a look at that at the end and get to any questions that you may have. Um, and you can feel free to also use the reactions, which has a hand raise and other functions as well. Um, to start with, we have a couple of grounding slides that I'm going to read out loud. And the first one is our land acknowledgement statement. We acknowledge the lands and waters now known as Maryland are the home of its first peoples, the Acahonic Indian tribe, Assateague People's Tribe, Cedarville Band of Piscataway Indians, Choptico Band of Indians, Lenape Tribe, Nanticoke Tribe, Nasu Waywash Band of Indians, Piscataway Conoy Tribe, Piscataway, Piscataway Indian Nation, Pocomoc Indian Nation, Susquehannock Indians, Yakagani River Band of Shawnee, and tribes of the Chesapeake watershed who have seemingly vanished since the coming of colonialism. We acknowledge that this land is now home to other tribal peoples living here in diaspora. We acknowledge the forced removal of many from the lands and waterways that nurtured them as kin. We acknowledge the degradation that continues to be wrought on the lands and waters in pursuit of resources. We acknowledge the right of the land and waterways to heal so that they can continue to provide food and medicine for all. We acknowledge that it is our collective obligation to pursue policies and practices that respect the land and water so that our reciprocal relationship with them can be fully restored. The next slide is uh, the Maryland State Arts Council's equity and justice statement. And that is that the arts celebrate our state's diversity, connect our shared humanity and transform individuals and communities. The Maryland State Arts Council and its supporting collaborators are committed to advancing and modeling equity, diversity, accessibility and inclusion in all aspects of our organizations and across communities of our state. MSAC and its grantees are committed to embracing equity and non-discrimination, regardless of race, religious creed, color, age, gender expression, sexual orientation, class, language, and or ability. The vision of the Maryland State Arts Council is to play an essential role ensuring every person has access to the transformative power of the arts. And we do that through our mission, which is to advance the arts in our state by providing leadership that champions creative expression, diverse programming, equitable access, lifelong learning, and the arts as a celebrated contributor to the quality of life for all of the people of Maryland. The next slide is, um, is associated with our current strategic plan, which was adopted in 2019. These are the five goals that are part of that plan, uh, and they include to increase participation, provide intentional support, build capacity, leverage connections, and bolster Maryland arts. Um, during any of our public meetings, we uh, we have what we call these creative meeting actions, and these are ideas to uh, to embrace throughout the duration of today's presentation and conversation. And that is to celebrate being in the space with other creative people, engage with everyone's presence as a gift, acknowledge that together we know a lot, enter the conversation with curiosity and inquiry, share your idea and trust that it will be heard, use I statements. Focus your language on the task at hand. Hold one another accountable with care. Apply yes and, I hear your idea and I'm going to add to it, and balance speaking and listening. 
Our next slide here is just a little bit of information about our various professional development opportunities. I know that many of you have participated in different uh, virtual uh, webinars and other workshops that we've offered uh, throughout the years now, um, but there's lots of things coming up and you can sign up for them uh, on our Eventbrite page. Um, couple to just kind of call out, we have our uh, ongoing Coffee with the Council series, which is every other Tuesday morning at nine o'clock. Um, it's just a great opportunity to connect with other artists, arts organizations, and our council and staff. Uh, those happen uh, virtually uh, every other Tuesday, 9 a.m. You can feel free to sign up for those. Um, we're also hosting right now uh, in-person regional arts, uh, arts, I'm sorry, not called arts summits anymore, regional office hours. Um, these are occurring throughout the state. We've had three or four of them so far, and um, we're going out to different local arts councils to hold open office hours to meet with uh, individuals and organizations. So Emily is going to be going down to Cambridge, right, on Thursday. She'll be there all day Thursday, and, and we'll be in Prince George's County on Monday. And then both of us will be in Baltimore City next Thursday. But there's lots of uh, events happening. You can feel free to check out the Eventbrite page for more information. And our last slide here before we kick into our content is just our reminder uh, that we're always looking for panelists. Um, this is just a, an opportunity to really get involved with the grant making here at the State Arts Council. Uh, we just closed uh, one call for panelists, but I, I know that there are others that will be coming up in the new year. Um, so it's a great opportunity to, uh, you know, really review applications, uh, understand, you know, what we're looking for in different programs. You work closely with staff uh, to go through that whole process. Sometimes there are uh, uh, panel meetings, sometimes everything is done remotely, um, but that's something that you can certainly look into if you're interested, and there is compensation for your work as a panelist. All right, so here we are today. This is our agenda. Um, so we've gone through our grounding slides. Um, we're going to walk through uh, an overview of the arts relief uh, funding uh, that uh, is available just largely to the Maryland State Arts Council and then specifically to creativity grant recipients. That's what we're focusing on today. We'll walk through the application itself and that whole process. Um, and then we will have plenty of time for questions and answers at the end. And I think I am going to hand it over here to Emily to talk about Arts Relief. Great. Thanks so much, Lauren. Great to see everybody uh, join us today. I also wanted to note that I think I saw Stephen, our executive director, join, or Kathy, our new grants director, and I think I saw Kiana, too, our executive assistant um, and council liaison join. So thank you, uh, three, for joining us. And if we miss anything, please feel free to jump in um, to clarify anything. So um, again, thanks for being here. Um, so the overview of the Arts Relief General Operating Support, and we're going to call it Argos um, for short a lot of times. So the, um, the, the overview here is that the State Arts Council received an additional $40 million specifically in Arts Relief funding for this current fiscal year, FY23, which ends uh, June 30th of 2023. So we're nearly halfway through um, our fiscal year and are trying to get these funds out to the public as quickly as possible. Um, of that $40 million, there's approximately $36.4 million in arts relief funding specifically flagged for general operating support. Um, and you'll see here on the screen that programs that we have in place already at the State Arts Council for general operating support include uh, funding our arts and entertainment districts, county arts development um, organizations, the creativity grant, which um, is the reason you all are here today, um, our folk life network, and our largest program, the grants for organization program. So what we're looking to do is to, um, to get funding through the existing programs that we have. Um, we've broken down um, the, the Argos funding into two rounds, if you will. The, the first round um, and the majority of the lion's share of the, of the funding um, we're trying to distribute early on in this fall cycle. Um, so you may have seen that some of our programs already had a deadline of October 31st. Um, 
And uh, the, but we decided with the creativity grant because uh, the creativity grant is in a, a rolling application um, as the program is designed and function, it would make sense that we had a separate kind of setup, if you will, for this particular application. Um, and then we also will have a, a round in the spring um, of 2023, and we'll release some more information about that um, in the upcoming months. Um, for that particular allocation as well. But for now, we're still in our first round here. And the purpose of the Argos funding is to bolster the regular budgets of our Maryland arts organizations and arts programs in recognition of the continuing impacts of COVID-19 on the art sector as a whole. Uh, so the use of funds um, is really to be flexible so, you can, uh, so we can allow organizations to use um, to spend on your own priorities. So whether that be um, program and mission-driven work to operational expenses, to paying your people, um, it's we know that folks are in different places at different times, um, especially uh, during this time as we're coming out in a recovery state. Um, so again, some the these funds are not really intended to be um, to substitute your regular funding, but really be supplemental um, and to increase in, um, in sustaining organizations and your capacity building. These funds are offered in FY23 only, as I mentioned. Uh, so we're looking for uh, funds to be obligated um, or allocated um, in 2023, so that June 30th of 2023. And just a note here that no organization is required to seek these funds. It really is an opportunity for you all to take advantage of, and we hope that you will um, apply, but um, it is not required. Okay, and then just a breakdown. Um, as I mentioned, there's five programs that we're, we're pushing these funds through our general operating avenues. Um, a couple of them had block grants, so our arts and entertainment districts, our folk life networks, um, so they were set amounts. Whereas our county arts uh, development organizations at county arts councils, our grants for organizations, organizations, and our creativity folks, you all um, will be a formula based grant. So just a little bit different setup. And with the formula, uh, the creativity grant formula for Argos will be the same form formula that we use for our grants for organization program. Um, and that, uh, formula is on the screen right now. So we are taking the allowable income um, that you all provide, uh, multiply that by a panel score, and then multiply that by a cap allocation percentage. And that would get you to your, your funding. Um, some notes here about the allowable income, and we'll go into this a little bit deeper here, but just um, as a baseline, the allowable income number will come from the Argos application that you would complete, uh, we would, were requesting that you provide your most recently completed financial statement. So that allowable income will come directly from your financials. Uh, so that would include anything from your earned revenue sources, contributed income. A lot of times it's going to be the majority of your income from your financial statements that would be considered allowable. Um, the panel score will come directly from your creativity grant application that you were already awarded from. So uh, we'll just we have those percentages already from that past application, and we're just going to pull from that. So you would not be scored um, in the same way for this application as you were in the creativity grant. And then the cap allocation percentage is based on the full application of arts relief. And then we've broken that down into a segment or an, or an allocation, if you will, of, uh, of funding specifically for the creativity grant. And that cap allocation percentage is going to also be based off of the same allocation percentage as our grants for organization program. So that way there's some consistency of the breakdown. Um, Within that program, there's five tiers based on your allowable income. Most of you um, as creativity grantees will fall in tier one as having allowable income under $500,000. There might be a handful that might be in these other tiers if you're not getting funding through our Grants for Organization program, for example. So a majority will find yourself in tier one. And what that looks like in terms of our projections for the cap allocation percentage that drops directly into that funding formula um, is going to be based on the same 
uh, percentages as the grants for organization pool. And what we're projecting right now um, is that a majority of you all that are in that tier one are looking at a cap allocation percentage around 9.5%. And if you find yourself in tier two, it'd be 8.25, tier three, 7%, tier four, 5.75%, um, and tier five, 4.75%. Now, these are just projections right now based on the information that we know and based on the number of, um, of organizations that could apply. So these percentages are subject to change, but it gives you a general idea of what to expect, knowing that you provide the allowable income number, we've got your panel score already set, and then you've got that general number of uh, for your cap allocation. And the timeline here, um, since we're still in round one, is that um, we're going to open up the creativity um, Argos application on December 5th. Um, it's going to be a rolling deadline through March 15th. So you have anywhere to apply between December 5th and March 15th as an organization who's already been awarded FY23 creativity grant funding. Um, so the apps will, will be reviewed in the order in which they are received since it's a rolling deadline. That does not mean that it's a first come first served, we're gonna run out of funding or you don't have to worry about that. So make sure you apply when it makes sense for you and it feels good in terms of your timeline between this window. Um, and Laura and I are also here to help along the way. Um, so don't feel like you've got to rush in your application by that December 5th deadline. Um, we're going to look at every organization that is eligible um, and every application that comes in um, with the same, um, the, the same process, if you will. And then again, round two details will be announced as we get closer to the spring. Okay, I think I've talked long enough. Laura, I'm going to pass it back to you to go through the eligibility. Sounds good. Thank you, Emily. Um, so for the eligibility, um, we've, we've said this a couple of times on different slides, um, but you do first need to um, have received a creativity grant for general operating support to qualify for this additional Argos funding. So if, if you're listening to this and you haven't gotten that creativity funding yet, that's your first stop is to make sure that you have the creativity grant uh, has been secured for general operating support, not project-based support, only, only the general operating track. Um, once that has been secured, then you are eligible to apply uh, for the additional Argos funding. Um, that I basically already jumped to the slide, <laughs> but just to, to reiterate here, um, so it's only available to organizations who have received general operating support. So if you are an independent artist who have re has received project-based support, you're not eligible for this additional Argos funding through this particular application process. Um, so again, that's that's just you need to have that first stop of creativity, general operating support. Um, and it's only available to organizations through this particular process. Um, the support period, so the um, this first round of Argos, uh, or the Argos in general, is only offered for FY23. Um, the funds are intended to support um, expenses uh, that uh, are made in multiple fiscal years. The round one, which is what we're talking about for today, is particular for FY23 expenditures only. Round two, which is what will come up in the spring, will be intended for FY24. Um, so just to keep that in the back of your mind as you're, as you're thinking and planning about the future. But this round one application that we're talking about today is for FY23 expenses. And that means that those uh, the funds must be used or obligated by the close of FY23 for this for this particular round. The use of funds. Um, so for our um, for our Argos funding, um, allowable and unallowable expenditures um, are similar to uh, the MSAC program for which the grantee has received your regular funding. So in this case, it would be similar to your creativity grant allowable and unallowable uses. Um, there are a few key things that are different. 
Um, so uh, since this is really looking at COVID relief, uh, we have also looked, uh, we've also added that you can use the Argos funding for debt servicing, allocations to cash reserves, and contributions to endowments. So those are important key differences. You can't use those uh, in creativity, you can't use those fundings for those things, but you can use the Argos funding for debt servicing, cash reserves, and endowments. Um, just a note for the future, the arts relief funding cannot be used toward your allowable income in future applications. That's not going to come into play right now, but just something to think about for the future. Um, it would be considered a non-allowable source in future applications. Um, if you are a creativity grant recipient year to year, um, you generally don't have to worry about a match as there is not a match required in creativity. But if you were to bridge into the grants for organizations program, for example, in the future, um, state funds are not uh, considered allowable for the match that is required there and in some of the other programs. So that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. The application reviews. So um, as Emily said, um, a lot of these components are coming from your creativity application um, that was already approved. Um, it's not going to a panel uh, like your creativity grant. This is just reviewed by the creativity grant program staff, which is myself and Emily. So we'll be looking through the applications. Um, they will be evaluated based on three factors. Um, the first is the compliance with all MSAT grants currently open. So that means that you're in good standing with all of your other applications that, uh, that you might have received recently um, or in the uh, somewhat near past. Um, the approval of FY23 funding and relevant program. So like we said, that means that you have been approved for creativity funding for general operating support and that your application shares eligible uses of Argos funding. Um, just a little bit more to, about that compliance portion. That's really looking mainly at um, for any applications that you have received funding for, making sure that final reports are complete. Um, anything that's due has been taken care of that would make uh, make you in compliance. If there's something that's missing from you know two three years ago, something like that, then there would be questions about you being in good standing and you might be considered out of compliance and therefore not eligible. So all of this is going to be completed in Smart Simple, which I'm sure you are all very familiar with and have completed many applications in. Um, you should have a, a registration already set up. It should be the same registration that you use to complete that creativity application. Um, if you need help getting into your account or anything like that, Emily and I can certainly help you out with that. Um, the application will be completed via Smart Simple. It will also require the submission of a completed W-9. You are going to need to enter, this is an important thing that uh, is somewhat new, uh, there is the new unique entity identifier, the UEI number. Many of you have looked into this, many of you know about this already, but this is, um, this is a federal system that is replacing the DUNS number. The DUNS number is something that organizations used to have. Now we're going to have UEIs, which have numbers and letters as opposed to just numbers. If you have not gotten that information yet from sam.gov, please be in touch with myself or Emily so that way we can work through that with you. You are going to need this. So, so we do wanna make sure that that is something that is in process, but do reach out if you have questions. Uh, we know that there's been some, some challenges uh, with sam.gov uh, and getting all of that situated for various organizations. So if you have questions, just let us know. Um, other requirement is going to be that there will be a final report due at the end of the funding period that will be later on next summer, uh, and that will be completed through Smart Simple as well. Just to walk through the application itself um, and what you're going to be looking for, you're also probably familiar with this screen, but you're going to uh, log into Smart Simple and go to uh, your funding opportunities 
uh, which is under the My Application section right there. You see the nice little arrow. Um, when you click that, uh, the listing of the different applications that are available will come up. What you're looking for is the Arts Relief Funding Creativity Operating Support. It is important because there are different arts relief funding applications. So make sure that you are at the one that says creativity operating support, um, not one of the other options, but that's the one that you're going to click on. Um, from there, once you click on that, you're going to hit save to begin the application. Um, the first couple tabs are probably familiar to you. It's just your contact information, um, all of the basic stuff. But this is the first uh, tab that is really uh, the, the part of the application. Um, and these are all just drop down questions. Pretty, pretty straightforward, but you're going to select, has the organization been approved for an FY23 creativity grant for general operating support? You would want to click yes. Does your organization have ongoing programs to produce or present the arts to the public? Again, you want to say yes here. Um, is your organization incorporated in Maryland or have a significant physical presence in Maryland? Yes, you would want that. And has your organization operated for one full fiscal year? And again, yes. If you clicked no to any of those, the application would not be eligible. This is the one narrative question. Again, there's just one narrative question for this particular application. This is it. Um, and it is to briefly describe your organization's current financial picture and include how arts relief funds will support your general operations, capacity building, and uh, or other sustainability efforts. So it's a 500 word narrative response, relatively short. Um, and that is the only uh, the only narrative portion of this application. After that, there are just a couple of fields to enter in some financial information for your organization. Um, so this is all going to connect back to uh, the financial statement that you are sharing. So you're going to share um, a financial statement. Um, and in most cases, just a simple P&L is all we need. Um, that is going to be from your most recently completed fiscal or calendar year, depending on if you run on a fiscal or calendar year. Um, there's going to be fields for each of these. So you'll be entering in um, your total allowable income, your total non-allowable income, your total income, which is adding the allowable and non-allowable, total allowable expenses, total non-allowable expenses and total expenses, allowable plus non-allowable. And all of these, like I said, should correspond to that uh, financial statement that you're also attaching. And I know you're all thinking, what are allowable and non-allowable? Here are your definitions. And this is also um, in the application itself. It spells out all of this. Um, so total allowable income, this is going to be, like Emily said earlier, the bulk of your, uh, your income. Uh, it may include, but it's not limited to revenue from ticket sales, tuition, donations, foundation support, corporate support, public support, gift shop sales, fundraisers, income release from restrictions, loan forgiveness. So that's probably going to be the bulk of your income in most circumstances here. Non-allowable uh, may include, but not is not limited limited to operating revenue from loans, carryover uh, from previous years, transfer of funds earned in prior years, revenue raised for capital or endowment funds, or funds intended for the purpose of regranting, unrealized gains and losses, and restricted income. Again, this is all included in the application itself, so you can reference back to that at any time. Um, if you have questions or not sure if something is allowable or non allowable, just let myself or Emily know and we can walk through that. And on the next slide, we're going to break down just the expenses in the same way. And again, this is also included in the application. Most of your expenses are going to fall into the allowable expenses, and that includes things like artist fees, salaries, technical fees, marketing, exhibition materials, 
theater sets, musical scores, rentals on space and objects necessary to production and admin, educational fees, supplies for classes and productions, and other costs to maintain an arts organization or program. Prorated salaries, rent or utilities, or other prorated expenses are also included here. So that's really the bulk of your expenses. Um, there are some non-allowable expenses, and those uh, include expenses related to regranting, um, accessions, acquisition of capital assets, allocation to cash reserves, um, capital improvements, depreciation, deficits, loan principal payments, contributions to endowments, or scholarships awarded. Um, again, if you have questions about what falls into which category, we're happy to walk through that with you. That was a lot of information on those two slides. <laughs> um, to finish out the, uh, the application, there are just a couple of attachments that you'll need to include. Uh, the first is that signed financial statement um, from the most recently completed or fiscal completed fiscal or calendar year. That again corresponds to all of those previous fields that we just talked about. Um, one thing to note, if you are an arts program and not an arts organization, so that means that your, your full organization is not arts related, but there's a program that, you, that we are supporting through creativity, you will be asked for a financial statement specific to the arts program, um, looking at the arts program income and expenses only. We'll also need your IRS letter of determination, just showing that you are indeed a nonprofit. And finally, we'll need a signed W-9. And it's really important um, that, it's, that will slow down any processing if it's not complete and signed and dated. So just make sure that that's, that's there before you, um, before you submit your application. All right, that's the end of our presentation and it's only 1233, so we have plenty of time for questions. Um, I, I have seen a couple things come up in the chat, but I haven't been able to look at them quite yet. Um, Emily, you wanna jump in here? <laughs> sure, sure. Thanks, Laura, for doing the bulk of all that too. I'm gonna to actually stop sharing my screen so I can yeah. see some folks, but we can always Great. bring um, the slides back up. There were a couple of questions here for um, regarding independent artists. Um, so I just want to clarify that this particular grant for Arts Relief for General Operating Support, again, is just for organizations who've received the creativity grant. Um, we did put additional Arts Relief funding into the project-based um, creativity grant program already. So we are already able to support more project-based um, creativity grant applications um, already this year. And we've been um, been doing that the entire year. Um, another thing I'll note is that for independent artists that we, um, we've we put um, funding specifically into a new program that we're going to um, uh, open up in the winter of 2023. It's our Grants for Artists program. Um, it's brand new pilot uh, program that is intended to support um, the living and working expenses for artists with a flat grant of $6,000. So for the independent artists on this, I would highly encourage you to take a look at the information on our um, website there. And if you're just interested in, um, I think there's a question about the creativity grant in general, if you're interested in um, more information about how to apply, there is a recording of um, how to apply uh, for the creativity grant on the website already. And again, Laura and I are also here just to walk you through that process of applying for just the regular old creativity grant um, as opposed to the arts relief. So um, I hope that helps with the, the independent artists that are on the call here today. And it looks like Kathy dropped some information um, into the chat as well. Thanks to Kathy. Um, let's see here. And it also look, I think I caught the early questions there. Um, Liz, hi, uh, says, would uh, project support from a public source be non-allowable? Um, generally, public sources of income, so um, whether it, government, federal, state, um, local, county support are, would generally be considered allowable um, if it's supporting your general operations. Um, does that help answer your question there? Yeah, I'm I'm asking in part because my organization has some public grants from City of Baltimore, et cetera, that 
uh, do support general operations, but also some grants that are project specific. And I'm wondering if those project specific grants also count toward allowable income or if the fact that they are project based eliminates them. Yeah, it should be allowable if it's considered your, you know, your general programming and general operations for your full fiscal year. So if you pull a profit and loss statement um, from your accounting system, you would you would generally pull that in there in support yeah. of your program. Okay. Yep. Okay. And one more question, actually. Sure. So you have the two cycles, the fall and the spring. Am I right that if we envision using most of the funds in 2024, we should wait and apply for the spring cycle? Is that true? Not necessarily. I saw Laura came off of mute too. <laughs> <laughs> Who was going to go first? Um, not necessarily because it's general operating. Um, you have you can use it for anything that's happening through the end of your fiscal year and obligate that. And also just a reminder that if you have a cash reserve or you're thinking about a cash reserve, you could also put the arts relief funding into a separate account um, as a way to help sustain um, and use the funds for the, the upcoming year, which is just a very unique specific thing for this, yeah. this grant. So something to consider. Anything else there, Laura? Just to encourage you, Liz, to um, really apply for both. I mean, it's not it's not one or the other. So you'll be eligible to apply for both the one that's associated with FY23 and then later on for the FY24. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage you to, to do both. Thank you. That That's a very helpful clarification. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay. It looks like there's some other questions in the chat too. And if anybody wants to come off of mute and um, and uh, and have any questions um, vocally, then you're welcome to do that too. Um, let's see, Devika is saying, uh, qualified for creativity grant, even though I haven't been in operations for a full fiscal year, but that won't be the case here, correct? Um, that might be something we need to check on offline um one-on-one -on -one. so why don't you send us an email and we can check in about that eligibility piece um one just to make sure everything's good for the creativity grant the regular one and then we can talk about the eligibility for the argos thank you um let's see bill lord says are paid student internships allowable expenses uh yes Yes, they are. A um, uh, link to the recording about how independent artists may apply for the emergency grant. Uh, the emergency grant is a separate uh, program that we offer also to independent artists. If you find yourself um, in need of emergency support, yep, there is a recording um, that should be on the program page. Um, and maybe somebody can drop that into the chat box if not already there. Looks like Kathy did, thank you. I think that's everything in the chat for now. Any other questions? Feel free to come off of mute or raise your hand or drop in the chat. Sarah, hello. Hi, Emily. Hi, Laura. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm just will ask in order to be eligible this for this funding as you said you need to have received a grant a creativity grant for general operating support and in order to be eligible for that grant as i understand you need to be a 501c3 is that it yes you have to have either your 501c3 or be a fiscally sponsored organization yes okay so okay got it thank you yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great question too. Um, and if anybody has questions about fiscal sponsorships, we can definitely talk offline about that too. And Sarah, if that's something that y'all are moving towards, we can we can chat about that further. Yeah, we'd love to talk about that, Sarah. Um, let's see. Donna asks in the chat if our operating budget is below fifty thousand, would we still be in tier one? You sure would, Donna. Donna, sorry. Um, we kind of expanded that um, window from GFO, which would be 50 through 500 um, to account for our creativity grantees. So yes, tier one.
Any other questions that we can help with before we sign off here today? Uh, let's see, Paul puts in the chat. Hi, Paul. Um, to be clear, you said we can apply for our fall FY funding for, yes, FY23 and then again in spring FY24. So essentially, yes, you'd be applying in the fall for FY23 funding and in the spring uh, for FY24 is the, um, the intention there to help spread those funds across um, multiple fiscal years for you all, the recipients. Um, from our end, everything has to be encumbered in FY23, but we'll take care of that part. But yes, great, great question. All uh, right, you're welcome, Liz and Sharon. Uh, can we use a year to date financial statement for this December? Uh, Paul, if you're on the calendar year, I can't remember. Um, then yeah, as long as it shows your income and expenses uh, for the financial statement. So a profit and loss statement is generally um, the, the financial statement to use, but we can talk offline too, and we can double check um, your, your financial statements. Um, I will note that um, there's a, a couple of options and, and I don't wanna to be too, too confusing, but if you fall in the calendar year, um, right now, if you were to apply by the end of, this calendar year, December 31st, we definitely would want you to use your calendar year 21 financials. However, if you um, apply into January and before that March 15 deadline, you could potentially use your closeout numbers of calendar year 2022 if you have everything wrapped up. So those that are operating with the calendar year, um, just consider that in your strategy of when you're applying to, to look at your calendar year 21 and 22. Okay. And Dorothy, I see your hand up. Hi, yes. I'm on your website trying to find uh, where the link is for the creativity grant, um, but like the session we're having right now for the first one. I don't see where to find that on your website. You know, like the session we're having now, you have to have applied for a creativity grant before. I'm trying yeah. to find the information session on that. It looks like um, Kathy just dropped it into the chat um, and she's noting um, you would want to go under the application assistance and there should be, it's almost like a drop down accordion page. There should be a link there. I think it's from last year because we didn't get the current year's recording um, up yet. So we might do another um, information session in the future too. So is this on your actual website or smart sample? Because I'm on the website and I don't see anything. Website. Really on the website. And can you give me the uh, menu top thing again? What so am I looking click, for? Yep, the, if you click the link from the chat, it should be the Creativity Grant Project page. Um, and then you will click on the application assistance drop down kind of accordion. I don't even see the link for the chat. That's where I'm still, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't even see that. Uh, Dorothy, maybe we can follow up in an email just so um, we can. Okay. Yeah, That's fine. we can give you a direct link. All right, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thanks everybody for joining today. We'll give you back your 15 minutes of your lunch hour, hopefully. Um, and again, Laura and I are here to help along the way, whether it's through this particular application or the creativity grant in general, like Dorothy mentioned, emergency grants, um, whatever it is that, um, that you need support with, we're here to help you or direct you to um, the person who could help you further. Um, and I see Laura dropped her email in the chat and my email too, thank you. Um, but again, we're, we're here to help along the way and um, please let us know um, how we can assist and um, hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining.